everyone. Welcome and thank you for being here. This time I call the Paulding County Board of Commissioners work session to order for April the 29th, 2021. I don't see any elected officials. Um, if you would bring the list forward, please. Right. Thanks, Tommy. And if you've got your cell phone still on, you can silence that. And uh, if you'll stand with me, we'll have an invocation and a pledge. <clears throat> Kelly, Father, we thank you for a new spring day when uh, so many things are coming back to life. We, I thank you for the, the life of uh, our staff and of this board that wants to get things done in Paulding County and to accomplish things for the betterment of our citizens. Your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts higher than our thoughts. We, we seek uh, your ways and your wisdom in what we do today in Christ's name. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The April 13th, 2021 work session minutes and the April 13th, 2021 board meeting minutes and the April 22nd, 2021 joint called meeting minutes are available for review uh, our announcements this morning consist of the uh, team paulding uh, sketch here on the richland creek reservoir dedication ceremony just last friday current board is uh, very excited about turning on the water for people in Paulding County. This is a multi-decade project that's going to change the face of Paulding County. It, it makes us water independent. It's just a, it's a momentous time for Paulding County uh, and its potential and it's, it's going to change the game for us. So very proud to be here, very proud to represent this reservoir in this area uh, from Burnt Hickory all the way down uh, to South Paulding. We sit here today on the, uh, on the culmination of a lot of work. I know that this reservoir is going to be something for generations to come that makes Paulding County the jewel of West Georgia. Our water independence, our economic development, all is going to center around having this reservoir here at Richland Creek. This was a team effort. This was something that the entire community of Paulding County came together under various leaders and different administrations to, to really come to fruition, to make happen and to become successful. This project is gonna be of great, great value to Paulding County for 50 plus years. We did have a great celebration, a beautiful day out there. Um, thanks for everyone's support. The uh, Board of Commissioners would like to present uh, Corporal Richard Mahan with uh, the Paulding County Marshal Bureau with the Public Safety Appreciation Award. Chief Hess is gonna give us a little information. Good morning. Good morning. He didn't know. <laughs> Um, in the words of his immediate supervisor, Sergeant Biggs, I'm going to present this award. Uh, Corporal Mayhem began his career in public safety in November of 2009 at the Paulding County E911 Center. He served as a communications operator at 911 until October 2013, at which time he decided to come over to the Marshals Bureau. Um, he began his law enforcement career at the Poland County Marshals Bureau in 2013. He's worked security, screening, he's worked in our alcohol division. Uh, he has, he's basically the jack of all trades. He knows just about every inner workings of the Poland County Marshals Bureau. Um, and that's very important. 
He was recently promoted to corporal in 2021 in January, and he has been a key part in learning the new CAD system. Um, that's not an easy thing to do, but he has that communications background, which has just been invaluable for us. Um, he handles any computer issues. He is the go-to person for any computer or technical issues. And Corporal Mahan is a true asset to the county, the Marshals Bureau, and the citizens of Paulding County. Couldn't be prouder of it. Corporal Mahan, may I ask you to come forward, please? And I'll read to you this uh, award wording. And I'll just like to thank you and get a picture. Appreciate having you. Public Safety Appreciation Awards presented to Richard Mahan, Corporal Richard Mahan. Recognition of outstanding service to his community presented by the Paulding County Board of Commissioners this 29th day of April 2021. And all of us have put our X on this. So. Thank you, sir. This? Yeah, you hold that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks again. You were surprised, huh? <laughs> I have no invited guests this morning. Um, under bid awards, item number two is to award the purchase of two Chevrolet Tahoes to Hardy Chevrolet in the amount of $79,340. The funding will be through Splost, Ms. Pollard, and Colonel Hunton. Good morning. Go this is an annual purchase. We purchase sheriff's vehicles for Splost um, each and every year. And this will place the order for... Um, Two Tahoes, 14 Ford Interceptor SUVs or police explorers, and five um, regular explorers. The state issues a contract, so we piggyback off the state contract. Um, and then Hardy actually looks at that, and they offer us a better deal than the state contract. So we're recommending award for each of these vehicles um, from Hardy Family Ford rather than a state contract, and the savings will be $4,261. Any questions? Item number two is to award the purchase of 14. She actually just touched upon each of those. Oh. On this one item yeah, they're all in, in uh, the same backup item also. So I do need to read these, Donna, Rebecca, or... Just touch on. So I do need to read them. <laughs> All right. I'm touching it. I'm touching it. Uh, award the purchase of 14 21, 20, 21 Ford Interceptor SUVs to Hardy Family Ford in the amount of $462,742. The funding will be through Splost also. And then Number three is to award the purchase of five 2021 Ford Explorers to Hardy Family Ford in the amount of $150,525. And that funding is also through Splost. So any questions on any of those items, panel, commissioners? We'll move on to number three is uh, to award the 2021 Asphalt Project Contract to the low bidder C.W. Matthews Contracting Company in the amount of $3,967,193.68. And uh, these projects are located in all four posts, Ms. Pollard and Mr. Jones. I'm going to be brief, and if it's okay, I'm going to go ahead and just touch on all three, four, and five, and then um, George will give you more detail. So on April 14th, we did receive bids for these asphalt um, projects. And we, along with DOT, are recommending award to the low bidder. So with that. Morning. Good morning. I agree with everything Tabitha said. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Now, a little background on Asphalt 1. This is a through road paving contract. It's 14.09 miles of milling, patching, leveling, and plant mix resurfacing on eight roads, through roads in the county. We received five bids. The low bid was $3.967 million by uh, C.W. Matthews. Um, the funding for this project will be allocated from general funds and also from the local maintenance and improvement grant funding through GDOT. They provided $1.78 million towards that work. This project has an October 29th completion date of this year. Um, we're about a month later awarding this than we were last year. Um, and uh, like I said, everything looks good in terms of the numbers submitted. We've done plenty of work with Matthews in the past. They've done quality work. So we recommend the board approve awarding this contract. Um, contract number two. That is Mr. subdivision. Jones, yes. Just have the chairman read over. I don't think we've gotten to that one yet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had a question on number one and looking over the projects. Um, I was interested in the Dallas, the project number three, which is the uh, Dallas Ackworth Highway, which goes from Dallas city limits all the way up to State Route 92. Um, and uh, I was interested in if that's a widening project, because right, uh, right now it's not 28 feet wide, is it? I think there are areas where it's 28 feet wide through there, but no, this is just a resurfacing contract. We're going to omit the section where there's a current project at Mount Tabor Church Road, Dallas Ackworth Highway. But yeah, as you know, the road varies from the Dallas city limits. You know, once it hits Industrial Boulevard, there's a wide first section, and it goes back to a regular two-lane section. You get into the New Hope area; it's a little wider. It goes back down. So. And uh, the next thing that I was interested in is the. Uh, pounds per square yard it differs from like some of them 165 and some of them are 135 right just want to get educated okay that's basically a measure in terms of the asphalt thickness um, per square yard so 135 I think pounds per square yard that somewhere is around you know one a little over one one and a quarter inches I think 165 pounds per square yards equivalent to one and a half inches thickness of asphalt so it's just heavier because it's thicker. Yes, sir. All right, uh, item number four is to award uh, 2021 Asphalt Project Contract 2 sub to the low bidder Bartow Paving Company Incorporated in the amount of $2,092,379.09. Also located in all four posts. Go ahead. Thanks for holding me back, Jason. I appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, this project is for work on 63 streets um, in 14 subdivisions, a total of 14.58 miles. We received three bids for the work. The low bid was submitted by Bartow Paving in the amount of $2,092,379.09. I'm sorry, 2092379.09. This low bid is 4.9% under our engineer's estimate and has a completion date of October 1st of this year. Um, this funding will be, uh, project will be funded from general funds and SPLOST. And um, if you have any questions, answer. All right, number five is to award the 2021 asphalt project uh, contract number three sub to the low bidder uh, Bartow Paving Company Incorporated in the amount of $2,511,400, $2,000,000. 511,443 dollars and 73 cents located in post four right. again this is for um, asphalt resurfacing work milling patching etc 71 streets and four subdivisions in post four a total of 17.84 miles um, the low bid of two million five hundred eleven thousand four hundred forty three dollars and 73 cents was submitted by Bartow paving this low bid is 9.6% under our engineer's estimate and also has a completion date of October 1st of this year. And the funding will be allocated from um, SPLOST and general funds. All right, you, you provide us uh, the, the list of all of these uh, subdivision streets, and there are a lot of them. Uh, I think the public might be interested in the rating system again. I know you've explained that to us before. 
Um, you know, basically we pave streets on a worst first basis. In subdivision streets, you typically try to get a 20-year lifespan out of it. Sometimes you get more, sometimes you get less. I mean, I've seen some streets, I believe they've gone 30 years without resurfacing. They've lasted that long. Other streets, you don't get 20 years. You may get 14 or 15. So, but I think typically on the average is 20. And you, you look at the cracking, you look at the um, condition of the asphalt, you know, how so we pick out and do the roads that need it the worst. So there may be a street or a subdivision, I would say, that maybe is 20 years old and gets resurfaced over a subdivision that is 22 years older or 22 years old. However, the pavement's in worse condition on that 20-year street subdivision. So you look at the, the potholes, cracking, um, joints, condition of the asphalt, there's raveling, weathering. So, And we look at it and try to measure that. You know, So we pick a representative section of a street and you look at the type of cracking that's there, you measure the type of crack, how wide it is, how long, and that way you have a rating system. You can compare um, street subdivision by subdivision, and so it's not just just an eyeball test. You also have it. There's some measurements that you have for your basis of determining which roads you're going to do. Thank you very much, George. You're welcome. Under reports from committees and departments from our county administrator, uh, Mr. Frank Baker, a very exciting uh, progress report here. So thank you, Frank. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <coughs> you may recall last meeting, I, I kind of just mentioned a little bit about a trash task force that we were trying to get underway. Um, if you go back several months, uh, there's been a lot of comments that uh, I know some of the board members have made uh, about various uh, sites, uh, pickup sites uh, with uh, Keep Halding Beautiful Commission and those sort of things. Um, so we've really taken a look at this and we want to be very aggressive in our response. So effective on Monday of this coming week, um, what you're seeing on the screen right now is, is there's going to be in the highlights, there's going to be a way for the citizens to log on to our uh, website and to uh, very quickly click on what we call a fix-it form and it's specific just to this uh, situation. So we want to hear from the citizens out there if there's complaint areas and so we have established this task force uh, to be able to um, aggressively deal with uh, with these complaints as they come in. Not only that but we want to be proactive in our um, our response with awareness and education. For example I want to applaud Chief Hess and the Marshals Bureau, they've been up at the transfer station on a number of occasions in the past few weeks and have provided some education uh, to some folks that have been coming up there about unsecured loads because unsecured loads are a real problem for us in the county. Uh, we're seeing a lot of debris that's coming out of the back of vehicles that are not uh, covered and it is, uh, it's a violation of state law um, for these loads not to be covered. But, but we are approaching it from a very, um, a very educational uh, aspect uh, of awareness and trying to get that uh, that message out there. So uh, Chief Hess's team has been working with Tommy Leonard at the landfill and they've been handing out brochures and um, that's I hope will be effective. But it's you know each of us that live here and we work here um, it's a problem for all of us because we see it. And uh, so we're asking the citizens help not only to help not put stuff out there um, that somebody else has got to pick up but also to help us identify uh, where these locations are so that we can make a response. Um, this team is built with um, folks from DOT. Uh, it is built with uh, fo folks from the Sheriff's Office, the Marshals Bureau, the Landfill, and uh, Keep um, Paulding Beautiful Commission. So we have a number of ways that we're going to be able to look at this. These complaints will come to our clerk's office. Uh, and I want to thank Rebecca Meredith, our clerk, uh, county clerk, uh, she's working with us and she's identified someone in her office that will be taking these and making an assessment of where they need to go. So uh, each will be individually handled um, and again we want to aggressively um, meet this problem that we have. Uh, so I want to thank all the team members and I want to thank the commissioners and the chairman for allowing us to, to move forward with this. So uh, again Monday this will be active. Um, will Lyons and our IT departments helped us get this so we will be active, and uh, so please let us know. If you have a problem, complaint area, we want to address it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I bet the new era will want to also uh, have this in the, the newspaper, <coughs> availability to report. Uh, no one signed up for public participation on uh, agenda items, mm -hmm. on the consent agenda. Uh, 
Public's consideration of these items, number six, is to appoint Ms. Genevieve Cole to the Pauling County Civil Service Board for the four-year term ending December 31st, 2024. Number seven is the Sheriff's Office would like to request the commission to retire or surplus uh, Deputy Stephen Quimby's service weapon, uh, retiring on May the 3rd, 2021, a Glock Model 21 serial number SWF583. Deputy Quimby meets the policy requirements for retiring a service weapon. Number eight is to reappoint Ms. Philip Hennessy, sorry, Phyllis Hennessy, uh, to the Pauling County Library Board of Trustees with a three-year term beginning July the 1st, 2021 and ending June the 30th, 2024. Number nine is to appoint Ms. Mary Wade to the Pauling County Department of Family and Children's Services for a five-year term beginning July 1st, 2021 and ending June the 30th, 2026. Number 10 is to reappoint Mr. Steve Grimsley to the Highland Rivers Health Board with a three-year term beginning July 1st, 2021 and ending on June 30th, 2024. We have no old business this morning. Uh, new business item number 11. Um, it's come to my attention that I need to uh, ask if any post commissioners would like to discuss these further at two o'clock or I'm sorry at seven o'clock tonight as uh, as new business items okay <clears throat> a new business item number 11 is to discuss action to approve a project funding allotment increase in the amount of eighty five thousand dollars for the completion of the 2020 asphalt contract two uh, funding for this work uh, will be allocated from the proceeds of the sale of Stonewood Creek Subdivision located where, where else but post four. George Jones. Okay. Um, the Board of Commissioners approved the original allotment <coughs> request for the asphalt paving work in Stonewood Creek Subdivision at the October 27th, 2020 board meeting. The work was on six streets in the uh, untop section of Stonewood Creek. The county was responsible for um, completing this work um, from the agreement from the sale of the Stonewood Creek property. Um, our staff went out and estimated the amount of work that needed to be done. Once we actually started doing the work, um, the binder was in worse shape than previously thought. It was more brittle. So um, quite a substantial amount more quantity had to be um, taken up of that binder and also replaced. So about 76% roughly. So that added um, about $85,000 extra in cost for this work. And so at this time, we're requesting um, additional $85,000 towards the completion of that work. The subdivision work now is substantially complete, other than line striping, I believe, which is a minor amount of work. But the topping is all in place. Any thoughts, questions from the board? Item number 12 is, <coughs> excuse me, discuss uh, action to approve a project funding allotment increase in the amount of $160,000 for the completion of the ITS system expansion project phase one and phase two. This allotment request will be allocated from SPLOS funds, uh, post one, two, three, and four, Mr. Jones. Uh, the original contract for this ATMS work was awarded by the Board of Commissioners in September of 2019 to Brooksbury Haney in the amount of $3,322,061.63. Eighty percent of the funds for this project was funded through a congestion management air quality CMAC grant. Um, that amount was $2,657,649. The county was responsible for a 20% matching funds which totaled $644,412. Additional lengths of conduit and boring were installed um, from Merchants Drive, East Memorial, up to Dallas Ackworth to um, our uh, traffic control center located at 329 Industrial Way North, approximately 2.08 miles. This additional conduit and boring provided an additional ring loop for the system. Um, the total of this work, extra work, is $160,000, which is 4.8% of the contract total. Any questions? 
Item number 13 is discuss action to adopt resolution 21-09, enacting a moratorium on the acceptance of rezoning applications to R4 and R7 zoning districts. Ms. Lippman. Thank you. Uh, we are asking for this moratorium or resolution that would enact a moratorium on acceptance of rezoning applications to R4, which is the multifamily non-simple, non-fee simple rental residential Oh, that's hard to say. Residential district and the R7 multifamily fee simple non rental residential zoning district. Um, if you recall, I did a presentation at the Planning Commission uh, last month about uh, how we're incorporating the existing zoning ordinance in our unified development ordinance. These two zoning districts are ones that we simply reformatted, and upon further look, we would like to evaluate the continued viability of these two districts. And while we do that, we would like to not have any rezoning requests to these districts submitted to planning and zoning. Thank you. Any questions? Concerns? Good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, item number 14 is discuss action to approve the request by the City of Dallas to amend the Government Service Delivery Strategy. Uh, and this is due to their adoption of a resolution for the implementation of an E911 communication center within the city. This is from Mr. Frank Baker, County Administrator. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, recently, as you've just mentioned in that description, the City of Dallas decided to um, implement their own uh, 911 communication center. Um, this is different than the way that we've uh, been seeing business being done in the county. Um, and based on that, the um, current government service delivery strategy includes um, 911 services coming from our 911 center. So this is a requested change um, based on their adoption. And it would um, just be a change where the 911 calls would be answered within the city by themselves, not our center, but that we would still receive all fire and EMS calls. Um, they would be transferred over to our current 911 system. So this is just a change in strategy, uh, the service delivery strategy based on their request. So um, that's what's before the uh, uh, commission this evening. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that, the, that you or the commissioners may have. Thank you, Frank. That is the conclusion of our regular business this morning. Um, no one has signed up for non-agenda items. Um, this is the time where we usually ask if there's uh, any special comments or thoughts or um, any items you want to announce. So let's just start with post one to go first, uh, or at least make it available to you, Keith. <coughs> okay. We had the um, gala for the flight museum at the Paulding Airport last weekend. Um, if you have not been out to see the museum, it is incredible. You will enjoy it, I promise. So just go out and see it. They do ask for a donation. You can give whatever you want. Um, but if you have kids, grandkids, take them as well. It's there's something there for everyone. Sure is. I don't have anything this morning. <gasps> Chairman. <laughs> now I want to congratulate the fire department. Went through. Uh, I know that they just had their uh, uh, promotional things, and some some guys got promoted. I I would be a remiss if I tried to to name them because I don't know who all got promoted. But I know that's a lot of work behind that. I'm glad those guys. Um, first of all study and, and seek that those promotions and I'm thankful that they uh, have a good a good thing in place uh, to, to get good guys and good and good leadership roles that's it yeah I just like to hit on the, um, the whole trash uh, part of it is you know we all have talked about it and done something about it so appreciate it to all of us but make Paulding County look better and stay clean but just remember 
we don't need to crash the system either. So, um, you know, just one little piece of trash, maybe some of us can still still reach down and pick it up ourselves. But um, I'm really glad to see that everybody's working together on this. And, um, you know, I can remember probably back in the recession how citizens got together and we bush hogged the 278 because the state actually cut back, but we wanted to keep Paulding County and Dallas looking good for economic reasons, you know, make people that can't come to this county want to do business in this county. So keeping it clean is a very big piece of the puzzle, too, for economic development. They come into a community that's trashy. They may not want to relocate their business here. So everybody, thank you for what you're doing and uh, for all the citizens. Just, you know, if you see somebody throwing out trash, maybe educate them a little bit. Throw it Thank back you, at them. Sir? Throw it back at them. Throw it back at them. That's what Chuck said. Well, I, I do have kind of an alibi around here uh, because it was such a, a great event out at the uh, Richard Creek Reservoir on Friday. And I thank the internal folks here primarily uh, that I see on a day-to-day -day basis. But um, Chief Hess, you and your group did such a marvelous job out there along with DOT folks and fire department and water system. Uh, it, it really was a, I think the word that's already been used is a momentous occasion, and it, it's going to uh, be a, a credit to Pauling County for years and years. Uh, that is the conclusion of our meeting, and we don't have an executive session, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Commissioner Cakers, our second. Second. Second by Commissioner Stover. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, we stand adjourned. <laughs>